to do it again. I'm trying to do this without getting too emotional, but I just got out of the car and it feels absolutely horrible. So, uh, I think this is game number six, uh, sorry, number eight, playing Broms go Grove at home. Twisted, my knee, I heard a crunch, same knee that I did my ACL on. I heard a crunch and just went down. So yeah, at hospital at the moment. As I said, I just got out of the car and it feels horrible. So, yeah. I'm not getting emotional about this won't help, but I kind of think that might be um, my last ever game, which is... Uh, Strange. Um, so I'm gonna go inside and uh, yeah, see what they say. Right, we're out. X ray done, didn't really tell you anything. Preferred for scan, so yeah. Ah. That was the day of my injury, and I was feeling pretty deflated, but then. Day number two came. The biggest video on my channel four years ago, I ruptured my ACL and had an ACL reconstruction. It's now November 2021 and I'm 90% sure I've done something pretty bad. So yeah, I wasn't in a good headspace yesterday, but I thought that the cameras roll and yeah, we'll document it and go from there. So this is what my knee looks like at the moment. So that's obviously my good knee. And that's my swollen knee. Yeah. Can you, can you ring my telephone? Yeah. This rugby player needs a massage. <laughs> I was rinsing the sympathy. I'm not gonna lie. And then day number three, I was back at work. I'm not entirely sure if I should be weight bearing, but here we are, moving fairly slow and uh, yeah, pretty swollen. But then I got some wheels. And then about seven days post-injury, I thought I need to start prehabbing. So I grabbed my little sheet that I got from A&E and I got back in the gym. I'm one of those people, if there's an elevator or stairs, I will take the stairs because I think at some point when I'm really old, I'm not going to be able to take the stairs and I wish I could. At the moment, it's like, oh, you literally cannot use the stairs. Cool. I'm missing the stairs. Weird thing to miss, but so. Oh, that's the thing about physio and rehab, and in this case, prehab, is that the exercises feel so nothing. It's not like you come and you get really sweaty. Unless you're working with uh, Luke Ellis. Shout out! Early strength and conditioning. Because you go to him and he makes you squat body weight. And at the end of the session, your whole body's shaking because he's attached your central nervous system. It's an absolute beast. It's him like straightening and anything past that actually really hurts the inside of my knee. And then bending. <sighs> really past that at the moment. It's pretty hellish. It is what it is. One of the things he told me to do as well early doors, you can put your foot on something ah, and let it hang. So there's no pressure, but you can straighten your leg that way. Painful to get into, and then as it stiffens up, it's painful to get out of, but that can be helpful. So the exercise is one, ow, it's static quads. Trying to tense past a quad, so you push your knee down to the floor and straighten your leg. Straight leg raising, trying to activate your quads. That feels horrendous. Another one is, they call it the wedging weight. I can't even do that yet, that hurts way too much. The other one is knee flexion, just to keep the blood flowing through kind of, I was gonna say your ACL. But I don't have an ACL anymore. And the only way I can describe this at the moment is there's things in my knee that feel kind of foreign. Something is ruptured, so it feels like there's something in the joint. Not hurting in the way of kind of what I can feel. That's not causing me the pain, but you can just feel there's something in there. I guess like that keeps the movement, but if you just come a little bit closer and point at my knee. See the difference in the size of my knee at the moment just because of pure swelling. Yeah. It's gonna be a long, long, long time back. So this was definitely the point I was feeling most sorry for myself. I was in this weird limbo stage between injury and scan where you don't know what you've done, so you have no idea how long recovery is gonna be. And you can't really set to work doing anything serious prehab wise because you don't wanna do more damage. I even regressed to using crutches again because I wasn't sure if I should be weight bearing or not. But then 16 days after my injury, as if blessed by the NHS gods. I got a phone call saying, come for your scan. Sorry. Can't use 
use that mask because it's got metal in this mask. So I was dressed and ready for my scan and my surgeon and some of his fellows, which are effectively medical students who learn from surgeons in a real life scenario. I was their dummy that day, came and saw me and he let one of his senior fellows have a play around with Mendy. They did a lax test. I'm not sure if I'm getting the name right. They effectively kneel on your foot and pull your lower half of your leg away and see if it feels detached from, I guess, your femur. The fellow did it quite gingerly and my surgeon said, what do you think he's doing? He said, I think he might have done his ACL. Anyway, big dog surgeon, senior surgeon, came, properly knelt on my foot, properly yanked, no pain, but he knew he could do it. And he said, I'm sorry, Josh, pre-MRI, I'm about 99% sure you fully ruptured your ACL. And what he said next, I thought was fairly kind. He said, I'm sorry this has happened to you because he did my old operation and the chances of re-rupturing the same one are slim, particularly kind of years down the line. If you survive the first one or two years, you're as likely to tear your non-operated ACL as your operated ACL. So yeah, I was feeling pretty unlucky at that point, but it is what it is. Worst things could have happened to me, but I had my scan and as I was leaving, I said, can I ditch the crutches or do I need to be non-weight bearing? He said, don't do anything crazy, but you should be okay walking around. So I grabbed my crutches, I walked through the hospital, I'm waiting at the entrance for a lift. My phone starts ringing, I said, hello. They said, hi Josh, really fortunate we've just had a cancellation. Can you get back to the hospital today to find out your MRI results? Now that's pretty much unheard of. You're normally waiting on the NHS maybe two months. I'm not slating the NHS, that's just the reality. So I went to work, I came back and I saw my surgeon that day. He said, unfortunately, I was right. You fully ruptured your ACL and looking at the scan, you've also torn your medial meniscus. Some tears can be repaired, some mean you have to trim a bit of the cartilage off, and some means you have to remove the cartilage altogether. Full removal, not ideal. Partial removal, I mean, none of these are ideal, but it's better than full removal, and then repair should hopefully be the best option, but depending on the type of tear, will determine what they can do in surgery. Unfortunately, he also explained that my wait time for the NHS would be up to 18 months. The fact I'm fit and healthy was working against me, and so I immediately said, what are the private options? He said, here's my secretary his contact details they will be able to advise and if you want to know how much it costs to get an ACL reconstruction in a private hospital you can watch that video there so while I was making up my mind with what to do the NHS sorted me out with a physio appointment and to my surprise he said you pretty much can get back to doing most things in the gym you can squat deadlift you might even be able to start running pre-op and I was blown away by this I didn't think that would be the case but he said the stronger we can get your leg pre-op the easier your recovery will be post-op which makes a lot of sense so he said I'll send you a program with some exercise on it and I want you to hit the gym this one step per foot. Stacker. Not Maka, call me Stacker. I like Rocky. This was four weeks post injury and four weeks of limping, so my legs were feeling weak. I'm trying to do a calf raise. My knee is coming forward. Like if I try and push in my calf, my knee naturally bends. My right, my leg can be perfectly straight. I can do that on my left. Pushes it bent, though. I'm gonna have to do double leg for, for I don't know how long. Left calf feels so weak. These are supposed to be single leg squats, but I can't do it on my left leg, so I'm doing them as like get ups. So it's kind of like a half squat. Uh, feels shaky. We're on stairs, but this is what they look like, so I wouldn't really say I've mastered stairs yet, but I'm not in that grey box over there. I've gone past the lift. Celebrate the small victory. So, we're moving a lot more freely now. You can watch me up the stairs. So, check this. I'm still not on two, and it's obviously, like, I can feel my glute really activating on my right. Left, not so much, but we are making headway. Look at me, camera girl can't even keep up. She's looking at me like, wow, wow, look at you move. Look at you move. Look at me move. This was about six weeks post injury and single leg kind of Bulgarian split squat started feeling more stable and I was getting back to more normal type exercises. Strength wise, nowhere near where I was, but in terms of the leg feeling stable and planted when I was doing exercises, it was coming along nicely. My glutes were actually firing when I was doing exercises. And for the first time, a single leg squat kind of looked like a single leg squat. I like that. Fully straight. You can actually straight my leg now. 
<laughs> I think she's had enough of filming me in the gym. Okay, only two more years to go. Oh, I'm stunned. I can see the red light. <laughs> Ready? Within reason, might even have to. I've lost it. <laughs> Little run. Camera girl can't keep you up. So we are walking normally again, if not with a teeny tiny limp. But you'll see from the session, it's kind of not what. I used to be able to do. And that was because even though at this point we were about eight weeks post injury and my front squats and my back squats and my deadlifts had all started to feel normal again, there was still a massive strength difference between my left and right leg. And so really I was still trying to focus on single leg work. That difference between my right and left is like actually natural. I'm not playing on that at all. My right is so strong, my left just feels so weak. Leg curls and leg extensions were the most obvious example of this. This was around week 11 and 12. So, kind of back to squatting. Still quite light, but getting a bit strong. But more importantly, the movements felt okay. I wasn't favoring my right leg when I was double leg squatting. No way near where I was, but we were moving in the right direction. I could also get back to normal gym movements without the fear of my leg giving way. Interestingly, from the moment I saw the physio, he highly recommended deadlift as a way of activating your glutes. And I found that it was one of the only exercises in the early weeks, maybe weeks kind of two, three, four, five, where I'd come away from a deadlift session and feel that I'd really work my glutes. Obviously the movement is way too fast, but I was just so happy that Bulgarian split squat felt okay with the weight on my back. I was also buzzing because curls and extensions were getting stronger and stronger each week as well. So it was quite a heavy leg session for me at the moment, but this is me kind of like freely moving down the stairs. So it's all going great. And then this happened. I planted my foot, my knee gave way underneath me, and then massive swelling, couldn't straighten it, couldn't bend it, and I was back to limping. Thankfully, this only lasted a few days, and I was pretty fortunate, because only about a week later, I was back at the hospital, and it was pre-op assessment time. assessment done so operation in 12 days uh, you know what i'm not squeamish i'm not particularly like nervous but doing it again is a bit like because you feel like you're regressing because i can walk around now with no problem but obviously when i uh, have my operation i'll effectively re-injure myself if that makes sense so yeah not ideal but we move we're getting there we were getting there this was four months post injury and about 12 days pre-operation so all that was left to do was film some videos like private healthcare costs also a video about moving back in with my parents because they live five minutes from my workplace and i'm not going to be driving for quite a while then two days pre-op it was covid swab time that was the quickest thing ever covid swab in the mouth then the nose and she said on your way see you thursday Oh, so now I've got to go self-isolate for 48 hours up until my operation. It's kind of weird. I'm, I'm kind of excited by this whole process, I think, because I'm filming. I'm like, this is going to be cool. But also, even though my operation is impending and it's on Thursday and it's quite a big op, you know, you, you get an epidural and you get sedated and all of that. And you might stay overnight. It's also the start of the recovery. It's the road to kind of walking, to jogging, to sports. So the bit between injury and operation is feels a bit like limbo. So to kind of come out of that and be heading towards something is quite an exciting prospect. So that is a full four months 
month timeline from injury to operation. Obviously there were some ups and downs, but we move. I don't think I've done too much damage to it since injury, which is good. So yeah, on Thursday, I head to the hospital and then at some point throughout the day, I'll be heading into theater. I am booked in to stay overnight, but last time they said, you're fine, go home. And they said they'll do the same again, which I probably would prefer because, because of COVID, I can't have any visitors this time. So yeah, we're nearly there. Old operation video, cost of this operation, and down there if you wanna follow the journey. I'm gonna be fully documenting my rehab. Big up, see you next time, peace.